Hi, so in this two-part tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to install PowerDNS and PowerDNS admin on Linux Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. So for this demonstration, we're just going to be using Amazon Lysa. So PowerDNS is actually founded in the late 90s, is a premium supplier of uh, open source DNS software. It's actually deployed throughout the world with some of the most demanding users of DNS. It's actually an authoritative server and recursor, and it's actually 100% open source. So when you purchase uh, PowerDNS for your data center, or if you're a business organization, or if you're a web hosting company, you actually don't have to pay anything to actually use the software, unless if you then purchase premium support that is actually offered by the PowerDNS uh, author. So PowerDNS uh, customers actually include leading telecoms uh, service providers and large in scale integrators. Actually, Cloudflare also uses uh, PowerDNS. So I'm actually going to be showing you how to quickly set up PowerDNS on a cloud hosted instance on the Amazon Lysol service. So the first thing that I need you to do is to sign into your Amazon account and deploy a Linux Ubuntu instance. So I've actually already logged into my Amazon account. And uh, when you log in, click on the Create Instance button. Scroll down, click on OS only, and choose the Ubuntu 20.04 instance type. Click on the $5 plan and set the name of the instance to PowerDNS Server. So once you've actually done that, click on the Create Instance button. So the instance is now deployed. So the next thing you need to do is to copy the IP address of the instance, open up Amazon Route 53, and click on a on the hosted zone uh, shortcut uh, link. So a list of hosted zones for your registered domain names will be displayed. So click on any one of your hosted zones that you want to use for this project and click on uh, create record. So I'm just going to set the record name to PowerDNS server which is actually the same as the host name that I'm actually going to set on the server. And then on the value field, paste in the public IP address for the uh, Linux Ubuntu instance and then click on apply. So as you can see, we've created an A record that points to the public IP address of the Linux Ubuntu uh, instance. So go back to the instance and click on the instance name. On the Connect tab, scroll down and click on the Download Default Key but, uh, link. So you see we actually have downloaded L L a .pem file, which will actually allow us to connect to the instance via SSH. As an additional step, I actually recommend that if you're going to be doing this setup in a production environment, that you set a static IP address on the uh, PowerDNS server, as I am actually showing you now. So you just need to click on the Network tab, and then click on the Create Static IP button. Give the static IP a name, and then just click on the Create button. But in my case, I'm not going to be doing that, because it's just a demonstration. So I'm going to go to my Downloads directory. And I'm going to name the rename the key pay file. I'm just going to name it uh, PowerDNS. Uh, let me just call it PowerDNS key. Okay. So uh, after that, I'm just going to open up my uh, terminal application and change my working directory to the downloads directory. Set the key pay file to read only by running the command search mode 400 and specify the file name for the key pay file. And then to connect to the instance via SSH. Run the command SSHI, append the file name for the KP file at the username of the instance, which is Ubuntu, copy the public IP address for the instance, and then paste that into the command that we've actually written up. So just paste that in and press end. Type in yes and press end. So we've now successfully connected to the instance via SSH. So let me just clear my screen, and I'm going to change the root user account by running the the command sudo su. And the next thing that I'm going to do is set it to set a host name for the instance. So type hostname ctl, set hostname, and then I'm just going to call this host uh, PowerDNS uh, server. So just press enter. And the next thing you need to do is you need to edit the etc host configuration file. So just run the command etc nano etc hosts. And then in this host file, I'm just going to type in 127.0.0.1, which is actually the loopback address or the local host address for the server. And then I'm going to attach that to PowerDNS server dot, uh, 
www.billysoftwebservices.com which is my domain name and then I'm just going to say Power DNS Server at the end there. So press Control O, press Enter, and then press Control X to exit out of that file. So the next thing we're going to do is to actually reboot the instance. So we're now going to actually do the installation. So we're going to install MariaDB, and we're going to install uh, Power DNS uh, system dependencies as well as the actual Power DNS uh, software. So uh, reconnect to the instance via SSH. And let me just clear my screen. So there's a document that I've actually written up uh, that can actually guide you through this installation. But before that, uh, the first thing that we actually need to do is we need to install updates. So just run the command apt update, and that will then go through to then download uh, some updates for essential system packages. You need to make sure you do this first before you start the installation procedure. So the first thing that we're going to do is to install curl vim and git. So just paste in that command and press the end. And then the next thing we just we're just going to install some software properties, uh, which is just a common package that you usually need when you're deploying a uh, software such as uh, PowerDNS. So just paste that into the terminal and press end. Okay. So it's now doing the installation. And uh, I'm just going to copy the next command, which actually installs the MariaDB database engine. So we're now installing MariaDB, we just copy and paste that command, type in Y and press end. So I'm just going to start the service. Usually after you install, after you install MariaDB, it should actually start. But I'm just going to run that start command just to make sure that it's actually running. So I'm just waiting for the MariaDB to install, or for it is actually now done. So paste in that command to start MariaDB, and then I'm going to also set it to start up its system boot up. So just run the command systemctl enable MariaDB. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go through the MySQL secure installation. I recommend that you do this so that you can secure your MariaDB uh, installation. So you just need to do this so that you can actually remove anonymous users, disallow remote login, and stuff like that. So once you actually complete that uh, setup, you now need to create a database. So run the command mysql u root and uh, run the command uh, create database uh, pdns. So that's the name of the database that we're going to be creating. And you need to create a user as well as a password for this database. So copy and paste that command and press end. So we're just going to flush privileges and then exit out of the MariaDB shell. So I'm just going to paste that in to flush privileges and then I'm just going to exit, exit out of the MariaDB shell. So the next thing we need to do is we need to disable the default Ubuntu system resolver or DNS server. So I'm just going to disable that so that it doesn't clash with PowerDNS after we've installed actually installed PowerDNS. I'm actually just stopping and disabling uh, this default Ubuntu system resolver. And then I'm just going to unlink the resolver uh, system link. So I'm just going to uh, re unlink that. And just, so just copy and paste that command. And then the next thing is we're just going to create a new resolve.connect file. And then we're going to set the, our name server to the default Google uh, name servers, which is just 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. So let me just check the contents of this file. Okay, so it looks like we've done the correct thing there. So let me just test by pinging Google. So as you can see, uh, Ubuntu can now resolve to the Google uh, domain name. So the next thing that we're going to do is to actually install PowerDNS. So just copy that command and then paste that into the terminal. So we're actually running through the installation now. So you just need to type in Y when you're prompted and press end. And then the next thing is we need to import the default database schema for PowerDNS. So let me just clear my screen and then paste in that command to do the importation. I think I've got an error on the command there. So let me just make a correction on the command and then let's run that. Okay. So it's asking for a password, so let me just type in the password that I specified for this DB, and there you have it. So we've imported the database schema for PowerDNS. 
And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a, a gmysql.conf file. So in this configuration file, we're going to put in some configuration that then lets uh, uh, PowerDS know how to connect to the uh, MariaDB database. So I'm just creating this file. So just copy the configuration that I'm, I've actually included in the video description and then paste that into this file. So after I've actually done that, press Ctrl O, press Enter, and then press Ctrl X. You do also have to make sure that you also specify your database username and your database password. So the next thing is we're just going to change the file permissions on the that the configuration file that we've actually just created. And we are actually we're setting the owner actually, sorry, and then I'm now setting the file permissions actually. So the next thing that we're going to do is to stop the PDNS service and then there is this command that PowerDNS actually requires that we run. Actually, it's just more of like a test to see if we can actually successfully connect to the uh, MySQL database. Okay, so as you can see, it says connection successfully. So we're just running sort of like a connection, connection test to the uh, database that we've actually just created. And it's actually using the configuration file that we've also created. So we're just doing this just to make sure that everything is working fine. So the next thing is to just restart the PDNS service and then we're going to enable it as well so that it can actually start up a system uh, boot up. And then the next thing is we're just going to check to see uh, if uh, PDNS is actually working correctly. And as you, can, as you can actually see, the service is actually listening on UDP port 53 and TCP port 53, which is uh, what we'd want to see, especially if you're going to be running an authoritative DNS server. And then let me just check if uh, uh, Power DNS is responding to uh, DNS requests. And as you can see, it's actually given me an answer to my request. So that's been it, guys, for the first, first part of this video. And then watch the second part for this video where I then demonstrate to you how to install the Power DNS uh, admin web based uh, configurator. I hope this tutorial has been informative. I'd like to thank you for viewing.